Dear Ineos, Manchester United fans are desperate for Eric Ten Hag to be kept. According to a letter that you could probably have seen, I'll read it for you if you haven't. Meanwhile, Jadon Sancho's situation is another one on the plate. For Ineos, well, a lot is bound to happen, but at least one thing that is done, it is that Anthony Marshall is finally no more at Manchester United. Welcome to the NHL Sport. My name is Webb. Like, share, subscribe, and let's wrap it up for you in this Manchester United news wrap today. Now, there is a letter earlier on that was posted by a group of guys who you know, seem to suggest that they speak for all of us, Man United supporters. I'll wrap it up for you. Uh, we, the vast majority of fans, would like to express our heartfelt desire for Eric Ten Hag to remain at the helm of our beloved club next season. We understand that this season has been challenging with more than 60 separate cases of injury and illness throughout the squad. However, Ten Hag has shown his resilience and ability in steering the team uh, through these turbulent times. Furthermore, Ten Hag's commitment to strengthening the squad depth and his alignment with the ambitions of Ineos are promising signs for the future. We believe that with Ten Hag, the, uh, with the, that we, we believe that with the right support and resources, he can lead us to greater heights and bring back the glory days of at Old Trafford. He has already won two trophies with Man United and we believe he can deliver more. He has been instrumental in bringing in youth players and have uh, that have uh, made a big difference to the squad. In conclusion, we the fans stand united in our support for Eric Ten Hag and urge Ineos to give him the opportunity to continue his work at Manchester United. We trust that with his guidance, the club will thrive and achieve the success we all desire. Yours sincerely, yours sincerely uh, the vast majority of Man Manchester United fans, this, they call themselves Ten Hag's Red Army. That's what, uh, that's how they signed, they, 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 you know, signed down on the, on the letter. Well, first of all, it's not the best uh, of letters written uh, to, uh, I've ever seen, honestly. We've seen better. I think AI could have helped them construct it a, a bit better. But that's not the point. The point is that uh, a decision has to be made very fast. In fact, Eric Ten Hag, according to what we are getting now, he's demanding for Ineos to make a swift decision on his future. And Ineos are confused now because, especially most, mostly because we won the FA Cup, and also he, they saw the reaction from the supporters. Now, I look at this statement and I'm thinking, Manchester United's Ten Hag situation is dragging everything and it's going to cause more problems for Ineos. And, excuse me, they might find themselves stuck in a situation that they probably have got themselves into because there is no, there is no reason why Eric Ten Hag, his job is not clear. His future is not clear up to now. When we are going into a summer transfer window, that is supposed to be I think most important to Manchester United. Now, whereas all clubs need to make signings and they need players, I think the focus for Manchester United now, after the season is done, should have been on players leaving, like we know Varane and Anthony Martial have gone. We know that Casemiro is probably on his way out. We should focus now on which players are we bringing in. Now, there doesn't seem to be progress because you cannot have progress in that when you're not decided on the manager that now we are going into a review process that is believed to take days, several days. It started today. It will go on probably tomorrow, the next day, for the entire week, until they come up, they come to a decision. You don't have this luxury of time, especially in the state Man United is in. A club like Arsenal, like Man City, might have the luxury of time. Manchester United doesn't, unfortunately, but Ineos don't seem to see it. I think right now we should be focused on the moment the summer transfer window opens, United is, is getting players in. We know which players we want to bring in. Now, for that to happen, you should have already been done with the manager situation. Well, unless, of course, like they say, it's going to be a head coach situation, uh, that uh, they're going to sign the, the, the players for the manager and then give them to him to make them work, which is a, is a, is a, is a style I, I, I'm not really a fan of personally. Because you bring a, a manager, you sign players for a manager and give them to him. It takes a few special managers to make it happen. It takes a few special managers to make it happen. Now, I'm assuming that 
I'm, I'm saying that, I mean, assuming that they will probably part ways with Eric Ten Hag and bring in someone new, yet go on with the signings they had planned already. I think unless you're Carl Ancelotti, it's difficult to perform that way. A manager has got to be involved in which players you bring in because he's the one who is going to get them playing. In a way, that's my theory anyway. I'm not a football manager. But that's where we are. Uh, so I think Ineos have got bigger decisions to, to, to make. Jadon Sancho is, is, is training right now. He's, he has a Champions League final coming. And he's, of course, wishing Man United players, you know, uh, congratulating Man, fellow Man United players on winning the FA Cup and stuff. But he has got a chance to win a Champions League title. But his, his future is also not decided. Is he staying or non? Is he, you know, are they going to vend him and try to find a buyer? Will he return to Manchester United? These are the things now Man United should be sorting. But for, for that to happen, the Ten Hag manager situation should have been done a long time. We're talking of players like Mason Greenwood, who is, whose loan spell is done, but there's no clarity on where, what next. Because even for Greenwood, to, even if there was a slim chance of him returning, we should, they should know, he should know which manager will be in place. Even for Sancho, same thing. He probably might not want to return if Ten Hag is still there. Or have they solved and buried the hatchet, sold everything, and owing to his decent performances since he rejoined Borussia Dortmund, the hatchet is buried and he will be able to, to return and play under which manager? Is it Eric Ten Hag or not? So Ineos is playing like they have all day, all night, but the threat in that is that Man United will lose out on core players that they would want to sign. Players like jo Joao Neves, the way we lost out on Kim Minje, who was an important signing for Man United in the last summer, but because of how we dragged, and probably then there was no money, and they were trying to find where to get the money and stuff. But this time around, the, the situation is worse. The money is not there, that's one. We need to vend players. We, don't, we, are not even, we have not even probably started properly yet. Yet, we need to buy new players. But we can't, because the manager situation is not sorted. We might find they need to suck Eric Ten Hag and still find where to find the money to compensate him. So it's a whole difficult situation. And the longer it, the, it goes, Ineos are putting themselves into a tougher situation. And inadvertently, that's bigger problems to Man United. So my honest uh, view is that Ineos should have, you know, they, they, are, they are late, but they are still taking their time. They should have sorted this already. Remember, Dan Ashworth's situation is already slowing their process uh, down even further. I said it here before that I lucky thought or felt that Ineos where we are hit a, a a blow by the by Newcastle's unwillingness to, re to release Dan Ashworth. They probably thought they would get him easy, but they are stuck with him, probably have already agreed with him. He's on a gardening leave. He can probably not go back to Newcastle United. But they either have to pay the money or they have destroyed the career of Ashworth. Yet perhaps they have agreed with him that he's coming in. So I feel like the Dan Ashworth situation is part of why, uh, part of the reasons why Eric Ten Hag's job situation is, is not yet solved. But you see, you still blame that on Ineos. If it shows you that perhaps they didn't, ha they did not have uh, a, a plan B. Yeah, that they don't have a plan B in case Dan Ashworth doesn't come in. So it shows you that they are probably not as meticulous. That they were probably not as prepared when they came and you know tried to bid and all the time they took to take. Uh, the percentages they took from, from the Glazers, they probably did not have a solid plan in place. And that gives a, 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 a quite an expose about how they slide. Because you must have a concrete plan, a plan A up to Z. You can't be one trick ponies that if we don't, if we have one done Ashworth, if not, we stall and we go into a, a preseason without knowing which manager we're having. Already teams like Bayern have already made decisions. We know that Bas uh, a company is, is signing. We know that Barcelona is bringing Hans, uh, Hans Flick. I think uh, Juventus have, se have sorted uh, Antonio Conte. We are talking of uh, teams like, uh, uh, like Chelsea, I think have gone for this Leicester guy, Enzo. Probably they, are, they have settled for him. So you see that other clubs whose situation, just imagine, have already got solutions. They are moving fast. But Ineos, who came in long time ago, are still dragging. So my take for me in this video is, dear Ineos, we don't have all time to come here. Right now, we should be talking about transfers, which players we are coming in. We should be going toe to toe, counting down to Jawal Neves and whether he's joining Man United or someone spotting him. 
those are the conversations we should be building up to. But realize now that transfers, I understand that uh, I think Tosin is now being eyed by I think Chelsea, they are going for him. That's how we are going to lose players that United were genuinely probably interested in. Michael Lise, will he want to be a part of this mess? There is no clarity on what's going on. So you look at that and you think Ineos might shoot themselves in the foot with how they are dragging and taking their time to solve a situation that they knew about long time ago. By the time the, F, the, fi, by the, time, uh, the, the final minute of the FA Cup, Ineos should have already known what they want to do with Eric Ten Hag. We can't be now going into a review, going into a review like they just arrived. I mean, what's there to review? If uh, that's one meeting is enough for you to review, why are you reviewing for a whole week? Well, or, or, or two weeks probably. It means you're undecided on what you want to do. You, you, you have no clear direction of where you want to go. And that's extremely bad. Dear Ineos, sort yourselves. Otherwise, you are messing it up. People had a lot of hope and trust in Ineos. But the way you slide is so not Man United. It might be it works at niche. But for, with Man United, you must have a solid plan. We are talking the biggest football club in the world. Subscribe.